The Russo-Japanese War, Part 8, Winter 1904-1905, Shaho, Sandipu, and Mukden. Even before the war, British and Japanese intelligence had cooperated against Russia due to the Anglo-Japanese alliance. During the war, Indian army stations in Malaya and China often intercepted and read wireless and telegraph cable traffic relating to the war, which was shared with the Japanese. In their turn, the Japanese shared information about Russia with the British. One British official wrote about the perfect quality of Japanese intelligence. In particular, British and Japanese intelligence gathered much evidence that Germany was supporting Russia in the war as part of a bid to disturb the balance of power in Europe. This led British officials to increasingly believe that Germany was a threat to international order. The Russians were preparing to reinforce their Far East fleet by sending the Baltic fleet under the command of Admiral Zinovy Rozhizvensky to the area. After a false start caused by engine problems and other mishaps, the squadron finally departed on October 15, 1904. They sailed halfway around the world from the Baltic Sea to the Pacific by way of the Cape Route around the Cape of Good Hope. It took them seven months and attracted worldwide attention. The Dogger Bank incident on October 21, 1904, where the Russian fleet fired on British fishing boats that they mistook at, for enemy torpedo boats, nearly started a war with the United Kingdom. Britain was an ally of Japan, but neutral, unless provoked. During the voyage, the fleet separated into a portion that went through the Suez Canal, while the larger ships went around the Cape of Good Hope. The fate of the civilians. During the fighting in Manchuria, Russian troops looted and burned some Chinese villages, raped a few women, and often killed those who resisted or did not understand what they wanted. The Russian justification for all this was that Chinese civilians, being Asian, must have been helping their fellow Asians, the Japanese, inflict defeat on the Russians, and therefore deserve to be punished. The Russian troops were all caught up in the fear of the Yellow Peril. They saw all Asians, not just the Japanese, as the enemy. All of the Russian troops were very feared by the Chinese population of Manchuria, but it was the Cossacks whom they feared the most. This was because of their brutality and insatiable desire to loot. Largely because of the more disciplined behavior of the Japanese, the Han and Manchu population of Manchuria tended to be pro-Japanese, but Japanese were also prone to looting. They were just far less brutal about it than the Russians. They summarily executed any Chinese or Manchu whom they suspected of being spies. The city of Laoyang had the bad luck of being sacked three times within three days. First by the Russians, then by the Chinese police, and finally by the Japanese. The Japanese hired Chinese bandits known as Chunguses. They were also called the Chunchus or the Kunjhuzi. They were to do guerrilla warfare by attacking Russian supply columns. Only once did the Chunguses attack Japanese forces. It was apparently a case of mistaken identity. They thought the Japanese were Russians. Zhang Zhou-lin a prominent bandit leader and future old marshal who would rule Manchuria as a warlord between 1916 and 1928, worked as a chungus for the Japanese. 
Manchuria was still officially part of the Chinese Empire, and the Chinese civil servants tried their best to be neutral as Russian and Japanese troops marched across Manchuria. In the parts of Manchuria occupied by the Japanese, Tokyo appointed civil governors who worked to improve health sanitation and the state of the roads. These activities were in their own self-interest as improved roads lessened Japanese logistics problems while improved health amongst the Chinese lessened the dangers of diseases infecting the Japanese troops. The Russians made no effort to improve sanitation or health amongst the Chinese and destroyed everything when they retreated. Many Chinese tended to see the Japanese as the lesser evil. With the fall of Port Arthur, the Japanese Third Army could continue northward to reinforce positions south of Russian-held Nook Den. With the onset of the severe Manchurian winter, there had been no major land engagements since the Battle of Shaho the previous year. The two sides camped opposite each other along 60 to 70 miles, or 110 kilometers, of front lines south of Nuuk Den. The Battle of Shaho was the second large scale battle of the war. It was fought along a 37 mile, 60 kilometer front centered at the Shaho River along the Mukden Port Arthur Spur of the China Far East Railway north of Laoyang. After the Battle of Laoyang, the situation for Russian General Kuropatkin looked more and more bad. Kuropatkin had reported a victory at Laoyang to the Tsar in order to get reinforcements. They were to come by the Trans-Siberian Railroad that was just being finished. The morale of his forces was low and the besieged garrison and fleet at Port Arthur remained in danger. Should Port Arthur fall, General Nogi and his third army would be able to move northward and join other Japanese forces, enabling the Japanese to achieve numerical superiority. Although he needed to reverse the tide of war, Kropatkin didn't want to move far from Mukden due to the approach of winter and the lack of accurate maps. The Japanese forces, commanded by Field Marshal Oyama Iwao, consisted of 170,000 men in 170 battalions, organized into a Japanese First Army with General Kuroki Tanabomo in the east, Second Army with General Oku Yasukata in the west, and 4th Army with General Nozu Michitsuda in the center and four reserve brigades. The Russian forces had 210 men in nine corps, which was 261 battalions, organized into the Western Detachment with General Alexander von Bilderling, Eastern Detachment with General Georg Stackelberg and his reserves, including the 1st Imperial the 1st European Army Corps with, with Lieutenant General Theophil Mayendorf, 4th Siberian Corps with Lieutenant General Nikolai Zarabayev, 6th Siberian Army Corps with Lieutenant General Sobolev, and the Trans Baikal Cossack Brigade with Lieutenant General Pavel Mishenko. The Russian plan was to block the Japanese advance at the Shaho River, south of Mekden, by turning the Japanese right flank and counterattacking towards Laoyang with Stackelberg's eastern detachment. Simultaneously, Bilderling's western division was to move south and to cut off Kuroki's IJA First Army. The terrain was flat all the way to Laoyang for the Russian right flank and center, and hilly for the left flank. 
Unlike previous engagements, the fields of tall cowling grains had been harvested, denying the Japanese concealment. The battle began on October 5, 1904, with the Russian Western Detachment moving 25 kilometers, or 16 miles, south, across open terrain with minimal opposition, reaching the banks of the Shili River on October 7th. The Russian Eastern Detachment also moved south through mountainous terrain, 36 kilometers, 22 miles. They reached the hamlet of Yangupusa on October 8th. Kuropatkin gambled that Oyama would perceive that the Western Detachment moving down the plains was the main thrust against Lao Yang, whereas his main force against uh, whereas his main strike force was actually the Eastern Detachment moving in the concealment of the hills. The ruse actually worked, and Oyama did not want to accept General Kuroki's assessment of the true situation until a copy of Kuropatkin's written orders to General Stackelberg was discovered on the body of a Russian officer killed in a skirmish on October 9th. On October 10th, Oyama ordered a major Japanese counteroffensive aimed at the center of the Russian line. The Japanese battle plan was to use Kuroki's IJA 1st Army to pin down Stackelberg's forces while striking hard against Bilderling's Western Division with IJA 2nd and IJA 4th Armies in flanking moves before Kuropatkin could bring it up to full strength. The Russians suffered heavy casualties in the east and were pushed back in the west, forcing Kuropatkin to commit part of his reserves into a central detachment to fill in the gap created. This central detachment was made from the 1st European Army Corps and 4th Siberian Army Corps. The IJN 4th Division successfully turned the Russian right flank on October 11th forcing Bilderling to retreat further. On the left flank, Stackleberg attacked the IGA 12th Division near the Yantai coal mines, and by nightfall had taken 5,000 casualties. The IGA 12th Division had lost even more men, but held its ground. On October 12th, Oyama ordered Prince Ken in Kotohito's IGA 2nd Cavalry Brigade against the Russian left flank. The Russians were forced back on the left flank as well. Russian operations were hampered by Kuropatkin's distrust of his generals, and often dispatched orders directly to their subordinates without informing Stackelberg or Bilderman. He also refused to use the field telephone system, so the orders often took several hours to reach their destination by courier. On the south bank of the river was a small ridge called San Kai Seki Sa, or Three Rock Hill, by the Japanese. Although only 100 feet tall, it commanded a wide view of the plains south of Mukden and was regarded as strategically important by the Russians, who had occupied it on October 9th. On the night of October 12th, the IJA 10th Division made a night assault and had taken the hill by early morning of October 13th over stiff opposition. Also by the morning of October 13th, Stackleberg began to retreat the Western Detachment northward after Kuropatkin had refused his request to the West instead. Oyama committed part of his reserve Lieutenant General Ueda Arisawa with the IJA 5th Division in an unsuccessful attempt to cut Stackelberg off. 
By October 14th, the Japanese had moved across the southern bank of the Shaho River, and the IJA 2nd Army had broken through the Russian lines. The Russians managed to retreat in order, largely through the sacrifice of the 6th Siberian Army Corps, which took many casualties rearguarding the retreat. As Japanese artillery on Sankai Sekishan, which was called One Tree Hill by the Russians, threatened the Russian flank in their retreat, Kuropakin ordered that it be taken at all costs. The Russians attacked during the night of October 16th from both ends of the ridge and had succeeded in taking it by October 17th. Kuropatkin then called off the offensive, and both sides began preparations for the upcoming winter by building fortifications and digging trenches. In some places, the two sides were only a few meters apart. After two weeks of fighting, the battle ended inconclusively. Tactically, the Japanese had advanced 25 kilometers on the road to Mukden, but more importantly, had blocked a major Russian counteroffensive and ended any hope of relieving Port Arthur by land. Total Russian casualties totaled 41,350, including 11,000 killed, captured, or missing in action. Japanese casualties totaled 20,345, with only 4,000 killed or missing. Despite the failure of the Russian offensive, Kuropatkin used his recapture of One Tree Hill from the Japanese as an excuse to send a telegram to the Tsar proclaiming a Russian victory in the battle. On October 25th, he was rewarded when the Tsar removed Alexeyev from command and assigned full military command of Russian forces to Kuropatkin. Despite opportunities created with the opening of the Trans-Siberian Railway, Kuropatkin was not willing to carry on regardless of casualties. On the other hand, the Japanese were unable to take advantage of the situation and the Japanese advance on Mukden was paused as both sides dug in to prepare for the next battle. That would be the Battle of Sandipu. The Battle of Sandipu was fought within a group of villages about 36 miles or 58 kilometers southwest of Mukden. After the Battle of Shaho, the Russian and Japanese forces faced each other south of Mukden until the winter began. They occupied a 160 kilometer front with the Japanese 1st Army, 2nd Army and Akiyama Independent Cavalry Regiment held the Japanese positions. The Japanese field commanders thought that no major battle was possible at that time and assumed that the Russians had the same idea. General Kuropatkin was receiving reinforcements through the railway, but was worried about the arrival of the battle-hardened IJA 3rd Army with General Nogi, which were arriving from Port Arthur after the Japanese won that battle on January 2nd, 1905. General Nikolai Linevich had joined Kuropatkin's staff at Mukden from, Vla from Vladivostok to command the 1st Manchurian Army and Kuropatkin's left flank. The center was held by General Grippenberg, who was the inexperienced, newly arrived commanding general of the 2nd Manchurian Army. The 2nd Manchurian Army consisted of the 8th European Army Corps, a division of the 10th, the 61st Reserve Division, the 5th Rifle Brigade, and the 1st Siberian Army Corps under General Baron Stackelberg. He also had a large number of cavalry. 
In total, Grippenberg had about 285,000 men and 350 guns. Grippenberg was at first pessimistic towards Kuropatkin's plans for an offensive against the Japanese left wing, which was in an exposed northern position close to Russian territory near the small village of Heikotai. He agreed to the plan on the condition that all three Russian armies coordinate their attacks. Details of the plan were leaked by the headquarters in St. Petersburg to a war correspondent from L'Echo de Paris, who credited the plan to Grippenberg. This news article, as well as Grippenberg's major redeployments on his, of his forces on January 14th and 16th, signaled the Russian intentions to the Japanese. The Mishinko Raid Kuropatkin's first move was to send General Pavel Mishinko south with 6,000 cavalry and six batteries of light artillery with the aim of destroying New Chang Station on the South Manchurian Railroad. The station was known to have a large stockpile of food and supplies. Mishinko was also instructed to destroy railway bridges and sections of the train track along the way. Departing on January 8th, Mishenko made unexpectedly slow progress due to bad weather and the lack of forage and supplies along the way. By the time he reached the station on January 12th, it had been heavily reinforced by the Japanese. After failing to take the station after three attempts, he was forced to withdraw, returning to Mukden on January 8th. 18th. The damage made by his dragoons to the rail tracks was quickly repaired by the Japanese. The orders for the Battle of Sandipu began on January 19th. Kropatkin issued orders for the 2nd Manchurian Army to attack in a big move to outflank General Oku's IGA 2nd Army and to drive it back across the Taitsu River before Nogi's third army could arrive. However, Greipenberg was not allowed to commit all of his reserve, all the forces. Kuropatkin limited him to three divisions plus the East to the first East Siberian Army Corps and cavalry. The Japanese were aware of these plans, causing Oyama to reinforce his left flank. Kuropatkin afterwards blamed premature moves by Grippenberg for alerting the Japanese. On January 25th, the battle began with an attack by the 1st Siberian Rifle Corps on the fortified village of Heikotai, in which the Russians took, but with severe losses. The Russian 14th Division which is intended to attack the fortified village of Sandipu, failed to coordinate its attack with the 1st Siberian Rifle Corps and attacked on the following day, January 26th, instead. Hampered by the lack of maps, reconnaissance, and poor weather conditions, with occasional blizzards, the Russians attacked the wrong village. They occupied the neighboring hamlet of Pao Taitsu. This came under a strong artillery barrage and counterattack from Sandipu, which was occupied in strength by the Japanese 5th Division from Hiroshima. Rather than come to the rescue, Grippenberg sent a false report to Kuropatkin that Sandipu had been taken and ordered his men to rest on January 27th. But the rest area assigned to Stackleberg's troops was in Japanese hands. Despite standing orders not to, Stackleberg ordered his men to attack. 
After losing 6,000 men, Stackelberg was forced, was forced to fall back. By the morning of January 28th, Grippenberg found that he was separated from Kalbars by the village of Sandipu, which prevented any attempt to link forces. He still outnumbered the Japanese defenders by seven divisions to five divisions, so he insisted on continuing the offensive. His decision was not supported by Kuropatkin, who acted with his usual caution and hesitation and ordered Grippenberg's forces back. Stackelberg again ignored orders and continued the attack. With the help of Mishinko's cavalry, cavalry they took part of Sandipu village. Simultaneously, the Russian 10th Army Corps under General Konstantin Serpitsky, with Grippenberg's consent, succeeded in securing positions to the rear of Sandipu. Despite the good situation, Kuropatkin then relieved Stackelberg of his command for his insubordination and again ordered Grippenberg to withdraw. Advancing Russian soldiers with high morale as they were on what appeared to be a successful offensive for the first time since the beginning of the war could not understand the reason. Oyama then launched a major massive counteroffensive on January 29th and succeeded in retaking Hekotai by mid morning. Immediately after the battle, pictures of the battle. Immediately after the battle, Gippenberg resigned his commission, claiming illness, and was replaced by General Kalbars. On his way back to St. Petersburg, he stopped at Harbin, where he bitterly blamed Kuropatkin for the disaster to the newspapers. He declared that Kuropatkin was a traitor and had withheld crucial support due to jealousy at his success. He continued a harsh publicity campaign against Kuropatkin in the newspapers after his return to Russia. Stackelberg was also relieved of his command by Kuropatkin and charged with insubordination. Total Russian casualties at the Battle of Sandipu were 1,781 killed, 925, 900, 9,295 wounded, and 1,065 MIA, according to USSR records. Other sources put the total at over 20,000 men. Japanese casualties totaled around 9,000, with only 2,000 killed. As the battle ended in a tactical stalemate, neither side claimed victory. In Russia, the Marxists used the newspaper controversy created by Grippenberg and by Kuropatkin's incompetence in previous battles to drum up support to their campaign against the government. The Japanese knew that they needed to destroy the Russian army in Manchuria before Russian reinforcements arrived through the Trans-Siberian Railroad. The Battle of Mukden. The Battle of Mukden began on February 20th, 1905. It was one of the largest land battles to be fought before World War I and the last and most decisive major land battle of the war. Mukden is now called Shenyang and is the capital of Liaoning province in China. 
The Russian forces, numbering more than 340,000 troops under Kuropetkin, fought the IJA, numbering more than 270,000, led by Marshal Marquis Oyama. The battle involved 610,000 combat participants and 164,000 combatant casualties. It was possibly the largest battle in world history up to that point. The scale of the battle and the amount of ordnance being expended was unprecedented in world history up to then. The Japanese side alone fired 20 million, 20.11 million rifle and machine gun rounds and 279,394 artillery shells in just over 10 days of fighting. The Russians fired even more, matching the entire ammunition consumption of the German army in the entire 191-day Franco-Prussian War. By February, the manpower reserves of the Japanese army had been drained. With the arrival of General Nogi's Third Army, Japan's entire fighting strength was concentrated on Mukden. The severe casualties, bitter cold climate, and approach of the Russian Baltic Fleet created pressure on General Oyama to complete the destruction of the Russian forces, rather than just another victory from which the Russians could withdraw further into Manchuria. The Disposition of Forces The Russian line to the south of Mukden was 90 miles or 140 kilometers long, with little depth and with a central reserve. The Second Manchurian Army, under General Baron von Kalbars, who replaced General Grippenberg on the right flank, was in flat ground. The Third Manchurian Army, under General Baron von Bilderling, was in the center, holding the railway and the highway. The First Manchurian Army, under General Nikolai Lindovich, was holding the hilly, hilly terrain on the east flank. This flank also had two-thirds of the Russian cavalry, under General Paul von Renenkampf. General Kuropatkin had put his forces in a purely defensive layout from which it would be difficult to impossible to execute an offensive without opening a major gap in the lines. On the Japanese side was the Japanese Manchurian Army Group. The Japanese First Army with General Kuroki. The Japanese Second Army. The Japanese Fourth Army with General Nozu advanced to the east of the rail line. The Japanese Second Army with General Oku advanced to the west. And the Japanese Third Army with General Nogi concealed behind the Second Army until the start of the battle. A newly formed Japanese Oryokuko, the Yalu River Army, with General Kawamura provided a major diversion on the Russian eastern flank. The Yalu River Army was much under strength and consisted only of the IGA 11th Division from Port Arthur and reservists. This army was not technically under the Japanese Manchurian Army, but directly under Imperial General Headquarters to attack Primorsky Krai politically, but the division was under the Manchuria Headquarter if the commander wanted it to be. General Kuropatkin was convinced that the main Japanese thrust would come from the mountainous eastern side. The Japanese had proven themselves to be quite effective in such terrain, and the presence of the former 3rd Army veterans from the 11th Division in that area reinforced his convictions. Field Marshal Oyama's plan 
was to form his armies into a crescent to encircle Makden, cutting off the possibility of a Russian escape. He was explicit in his orders that combat within the city of Mukden itself was to be avoided. All during the war, the Japanese had pursued a meticulous civil affairs policy aimed at avoiding civilian casualties and keeping the Chinese populace on their side. This was a sharp contrast to the policies during the First Sino-Japanese War and later the Second Sino-Japanese War. The battle. The battle began with the 5th Japanese Army attacking on the left flank of the Russian forces on February 20th. On February 27th, the Japanese 4th Army, Army attacked the right flank, while the other Japanese forces also attacked the Russian front lines. On the same day, the Japanese 3rd Army began its movement in a wide circle northwest of Mukden. By March 1st, action on the eastern and center fronts were largely static. The Japanese had made small advances, but under heavy casualties. However, on March 7th, General Kuropatkin began withdrawing forces from the Eastern Front to counter the Japanese Third Army's moves on the western flank of Mukden. He was so worried about General Nogi's movements that he decided to lead the counterattack himself. The shifting of forces from east to west was not well coordinated by the Russians, causing the 1st and 3rd Manchurian armies to come nearly to disintegrate into chaos. Then General Kuropatkin decided to withdraw his troops north towards Mukden to face the Japanese forces head on in the city's southwest and at the banks of the Han River, the Han River, in the city's southeast. Then Field Marshal Oyama seized the chance that he had been waiting for, and his orders to attack were changed to pursue and destroy. Luck was with the Japanese due to the late thaw in the weather. The Han River was still partially frozen, so it was not an obstacle to the Japanese attack. It was guarded by the Russian left flank, commanded by Major General Mikhail Alexeyev. As they crossed the river, the Japanese attack was hampered when they encountered stiff resistance and heavy artillery fire coming from the Russians. General Reninkov was then in command and the Japanese suffered yet more heavy casualties. After heavy fighting, the Japanese succeeded in taking the northern bank of the river, causing the Russian defense lines defending the bank to collapse. On the far edge of the left flank was also partially cut off from the main body of Kuropatkin's army. At the same time, a salient was formed, just 18 kilometers or 15 kilometers west of Mukden. This enabled the Japanese to totally encircle the Russians on the right flank in the process. All but encircled and with no hope of, for victory, General Kuropatkin gave the order to retreat at 1845 on March 9th. The Russian withdrawal was complicated by General Nose's breach through the Russian rear lines over the Hun River. The withdrawal quickly turned into a disorganized rout. The panicked Russian forces abandoned their wounded weapons and supplies in their efforts to run away north towards Tierling. 
At 10 o'clock a.m. on March 10th, Japanese forces occupied Mukden. After they occupied Mukden, the Japanese continued their hard-driven pursuit of the Russians. But this was hampered when Oyama knew that his army's supplies were stretching too thin. He still continued the pursuit of the enemy, just in a lazy, slow manner. The pursuit was stopped 20 kilometers past Mukden. But the Russians were already fleeing farther north from Tierling towards the Sino-Russian border at a fast pace. The battle was over. The Japanese had won decisively. Throughout the battle, many foreign military observers were present in order to observe how a possible next great war might be fought. The Battle of Mukden heavily foreshadowed the tactics to be used in World War I. Conclusion Russian casualties were nearly 90,000. The Russians had also lost most of their combat supplies as well as most of their artillery and heavy machine guns. Fearing further Japanese advances, General Kuropatkin ordered that the town of Tiling be put to the torch and marched his remaining men ten days further north to a new defense line at Xingpingkai, which is now modern Xiping, Jilin province. There, General Mikhail Batyanyov, who replaced General Bilderling as commander of the 3rd Manchurian Army, organized defenses against a possible renewed Japanese offensive. However, Kuropatkin did not hold this line very long and soon organized a complete withdrawal of Russian forces from the region. The Japanese forces suffered 75,000 casualties, which included a higher percentage of killed and wounded over the Russians. The Japanese captured 58 artillery pieces. No serious fighting on land occurred after this battle, as both Russian and Japanese armies were exhausted from the conflict. With the defeat of the Russian Manchurian army at Mukden, the Russian forces were driven out of southern Manchuria. However, with problems concerning its overstretched supply lines, the Japanese army failed to destroy the Russian forces stationed in the region completely, and Kuropatkin's forces, though severely demoralized, short of supplies, and on the verge of disintegration, were still largely intact. The Battle of Mukden was decisive enough to shatter the Russians' morale, and with the unfinished Trans-Siberian Railroad now in Japanese hands, undermined the Tsarist government's war effort. The victory shocked the imperial powers of Europe, as the Japanese proved overwhelmingly throughout the battle, although the Russians had more manpower and material, it showed that European armies were not automatically superior to those of other nations and could even be even decisively outmatched in battle. Tsar Nicholas II was particularly shocked when the news reached the palace in St. Petersburg. The relatively tiny Asian Empire of Japan could defeat the powerful and huge Russian Empire. The Tsarist gov government was irritated over the incompetence and clumsiness of the commanders during the battle. The generals Alexander Samsonov and Paul von Rennenkampf began to loathe each other as Samsonov very publicly accused von Rennenkampf of failing to assist him. In World War I, these generals 
would command the two armies involved in the even more disastrous Battle of Tannenberg. Here is a Japanese propaganda from the war. It is a woodcut print showing Tsar Nicholas II waking from a nightmare of the battered and wounded Russian forces returning from battle. The war was not over yet. The final decisive battle of the war would be eventually fought on the waters of Tsushima. <laughs>